So with the new spring season upon us here in the uh, Colorado Rockies, um, one of my favorite things to do uh, in the spring and summer is uh, photographing wildflowers. And uh, actually this morning I'm uh, inspired to uh, shoot some garden flowers. So these are some blue flocks that uh, grow in our garden. And um, uh, my favorite lens for this type of photography is my good old trusty 55 micro uh, Nikon. It's, uh, as you can tell by the aperture ring there, it is, it is an oldie from the film era, but uh, shoots wonderful, uh, wonderful macro images. And at F2.8, it's just got a great uh, bokeh um, and you know, just create some just really beautiful images. And I like to shoot wide open or maybe F4. And um, like with these blue flocks here, I really like finding spots. I've got some dappled light with coming through a tree that's over here just off camera. And that dappled light highlights certain ones at different times. And I like finding the flower that's getting spotlit and kind of creating that is the centerpiece or the main subject and creating a composition around that. So, and I tend to do this kind of photography with no tripod. Um, I just find it so much more enjoyable just to really get in there close. And the focus, of course, at F2.8 is very tricky and I will shoot multiple images to, to just get that focus where I want it. But I like the freedom of just moving around without the tripod. And I find the photography is much more fluid for me and much more, it's just a satisfying, it's just a satisfying change. With my landscape work, it's all about the tripod. It's all about setting up and taking time. This is a bit more fast and fluid for me. So I find the compositions and work, work around. And as the light changes, those, those little spots of light change, uh, I, you know, I'm able to work faster and it tripod always feels kind of cumbersome and, and, um, um, from time to time though, if I find a particularly good composition, I will get the tripod out and, um, benefit from that. And there are obviously benefits to that. I can do some focus stacking and, uh, it can slow down and take a little more time with the composition. Um, but, um, a lot of the time I just handhold and, uh, Put it on aperture priority, make sure I've got a fast enough shutter speed, and that's usually no problem at f2.8 or f4. Um, I'm usually, you know, way up there in a pretty healthy shutter speed, even at ISO 100, and sometimes I'll drop it down to ISO 64, which is where I normally shoot my landscape work. So, um, yeah, just going to work around on this on this plant here with, the, uh, with all the different flowers and um, see what I can get. So like I say, I like to find a flower or two that are really spotlit nicely. And uh, use those as kind of my main subject to end. And it's actually the light is getting up now a little bit where all these back here are starting to get more in the bright sun. So actually earlier was, a, was better. But I've still got some nice dappled light down here below, as you can see. And focusing can be very delicate. Handhold, handheld, but uh, sometimes I almost hold my breath. But yeah, the, the focus, you know, as, as it comes in and out of focus, I uh, take a number of shots just to make sure I get it. And I honestly, I don't always either. And sometimes I 
Um, F4 gives me just enough more uh, kind of a leeway in my depth of field. And still I get that nice out of focus bokeh in the background, especially as I get in close. And that's the nice thing about macro lenses like this. I can get in nice and close. And I usually like to get the kind of the center center portion of the flower in focus is this thing I go for generally, but depends what I'm trying to illustrate. Now I would love to find some bees, but haven't seen nearly as many bees this summer so far. Uh, kind of concerned about that. So um, hopefully we'll start seeing some more bees. We're certainly getting a lot of nice blooms here. Um, this spring and uh, I think hopefully they'll they'll be here but so far it's been pretty quiet bee wise so uh, so it's really just all about compositions of the the light and the shapes of the flowers and again the limited focus I, I think just really creates just kind of a nice magic and with a little bit of breeze of course becomes a little more challenging and make sure I got a fast enough shutter speed. So I'm gonna probably bump it up to ISO 100. I was at 64 there for those. All right, so let's go in and take a look and see what I've got. Okay, here we are in Lightroom. Got the images loaded up and uh, let's take a quick look. Um, but overall, I like what I'm seeing. You can see what I was talking about with the dappled lighting, just creating a spotlight effect on some of the flowers. And the ones that uh, I have that I think are my favorites, just overall glancing at these, just the lighting is much more dynamic and much more interesting um, with those. You know, you have one flower just really standing out well, or maybe two flowers. But then as you get down here, the lighting's much more even, and it's just, it's not as interesting offhand. Um, I can still, I, if I like the, you know, the composition, the, uh, the flowers in it, I think I can still work with those and really, and bring those out more, but just a little more work. I like to really catch it, um, in the field, but overall, like I say, I'm, I'm pleased with what I'm seeing here. I think some fun, I think I've got some fun stuff here. Um, so let's just go back up here and take a look. Um, these here are some of my favorites. And what I like to do is go in full screen, then just kind of scroll through and see the ones. You can see where I've missed the focus maybe just a tiny bit. I want this area sharp, and it's much sharper here in these two photos. So we'll grab onto this one. Let's take it into develop, and you can see, um, see, you know, right off the bat, the, the lighting's interesting. I love the way this flower spotlight. Um, so most of these are going to be saved uh, for social media. I'll be sharing them on my Facebook page and that sort of stuff. So um, I'm probably going to go ahead and just crop it in a social media friendly, um, you know, ratio for about four to five uh, really works well. And um, kind of move that around. Yeah, kind of crop in a little bit. So that's generally the first thing I do with my flower images is go in and crop Get kind of an interesting crop. I want to open that up just a little bit more. But also kind of place this flower in more of the upper third. And um, yeah, so that's pretty fun. And so then, you know, there's really not a whole lot to do with that. One of the things I like to do with flower images, though, um, to really kind of bring out some of the texture, but keep them soft as I will actually move this texture slider up. So looking for those, those lines along in the petals, but then take the clarity the other way a little bit. And that just kind of gives the overall, keeps kind of an overall soft appearance, but yet the textures bring out a little bit of some of the detail. And that's a little trick that I use with flower photography. And I, I just like the kind of look I can get with that. Went maybe a bit too far with the texture there. Let's back that one off a little bit. Let's scroll down. I also I like to put a little bit of vignetting. Now, sometimes just the vignette straight out of the box right here works fine. <clears throat> and sometimes 
I like to uh, tailor it a little more specifically to the image. I think with this one, it's I think the standard vignetting works pretty well. Brings just a little more a little more focus in on that flower right there. Uh, and let's see. We'll go in and do a bit with slide the blacks over just so I get a nice histogram. So I've got I've got blacks clear over to the left. I've got whites over to the right. So I'm, I'm covering that whole space and then bring the highlights down just a touch because those highlights can get a little blown out in the flowers. And I want to keep that detail in there. So something like that there. Um, so that's pretty nice. Uh, maybe a bit too much with the with the vignetting so I might dial that back just a touch I like to keep that subtle uh, almost so you know somebody who's not a photographer might even not even notice it too much you do kind of down on this bottom left corner but I'll bring it up just a touch yeah somewhere in there and that's pretty nice so I'll I'll give that one a, a one rating and and um, I can export that so let's see let's go into these here so Again, going to full frame, and I'm, what I'm really looking for is a sharpness right here along, along in the center of the flower, along the stamen, and those those look pretty good. I think that one might just be a touch better. Yeah, you can see where I just got those along that edge there, just nice and crisp in that second one. So that's pretty good. I'm going to give that a one rating as well. And I just give, I often just go through and just give things a quick one one or two star rating, just so I can kind of pick the ones I like the best do a quick cull that way then I generally come back and do my editing I kind of jumped into the editing first this time just to show you a bit of that but for the most part I usually kind of go in and do my do my editing after I've done a quick pick of a number of them that's not bad I like that one see what ones really jump out at me I kind of like the lighting in that one this one's not bad either I like that I'm getting a little variety of light. So now here's some of the ones where the lighting is a bit more muted um, or a bit more even, low contrast. And they're still, they're not bad. I like the composition, I especially with these two flowers. Um, and I think, like, here's a nice sharp one here. That's not bad either. Oh, that's kind of a nice one. Let's just take this one. Let's also do a four by five crop with that. And sometimes I will play around with all kinds of different crops with, with these. But um, for right now, I'm doing some 4x5 crops just because I intend to share these on my Facebook page. Yeah, so I think something like that is, is pretty nice. Now let's just see if, again, work with the, uh, it's one of the first things I do almost every image is I work with the contrast range. So really get that histogram so it's showing a full range of values. And you can see once you do that, the image starts popping a whole lot more just with that. So you really don't need to do a ton of stuff, um, at least I don't, before I do that. Because what that shows to me is, you know, it, it really just adjusting the contrast in the histogram here. I can get a lot of what I want out of this image without having to do a lot of burning and dodging, masking, you know that sort of thing so and that's actually pretty nice I like the way I'm getting more highlight in here than I really saw initially um, and the other thing I like about that too is it it really the saturation I don't touch saturation um, or uh, vibrance until I've done this as well and you can see I'm not really doing much with these I I imported them in with just a tiny bit and for the most part I think I'm gonna leave them but this one I think I will do the texture and clarity trick so let's try that out let's add a little texture but bring this clarity back down to soften that soften some of the larger areas of contrast so the texture is getting more more sharpness in 
in the smaller areas, but you can see where the clarity starts to just kind of give an overall soft feel. And it's, it's something I play around with. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. But that's kind of nice there. Okay, so now I will also want to do a little selective lighting with this one. Um, although I really, after adjusting the tonalities, I'm liking the way this flower really popped out a bit more. So there's not a lot I want to do with it, but I think I just want to play around with a bit of a selective vignette again. So I'll go back up under here into the uh, selective masking and go to the radial gradient and draw a, roughly around where that flower is. And I can invert that. Now let's just go into shadows and try that out. So we'll just go into shadows and darken down some of the area around here. And I'm, what I'm really wanting to do is hit mostly in the grass around it and the leaves. Darken those down. Yeah, so that's not bad. So let's take a look before and after. So that was before, after. Super subtle effect, but I like that. Um, uh, so I think that that's pretty nice for this one. So I'm going to make sure, let's see, that one's already rated. So, so now that I've got them rated, I can just go to sort, of course, and go to rating. And these are the ones that I will export to uh, Facebook, um, at least the ones that I, that I worked up. So I'll probably give these, like I worked that one, I worked that one, I worked that one. I can even make those my picks. Um, I like to go through and do a quick overview, maybe do a couple of edits like I did just to see, okay, yeah, is this really an image that's going to work well or not? And uh, But that's really it. So that's just a little bit of fun with uh, some flower photography out in the garden this morning. Uh, so just a nice spring um, activity, uh, getting out with the camera and just playing a little bit. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, help me keep this going. I really appreciate it. And till next time, I'll see you around. If you're interested in learning more about photography, be sure to head on over to my website, caseychinphotography.com, and look under the workshops tab. I've got links for online workshops, intermediate and advanced workshops, in-person workshops, and also a workshop interest questionnaire. Let me know what you're interested in learning more about. And when you enroll in one of my workshops, you'll also have access to my Facebook group, Casey Chin Photography Workshops. This Facebook group is designed for participants in my workshops. It's a place where you can share your images, get feedback from myself and others, and build community with other people who are passionate about and interested in photography.